or it'll be forgotten soon, but we'll see which one it does. It is the Taylor Show, the Mike Taylor Show on YouTube. Should I stare straight at the camera, LG? Yeah, you do whatever you want. Man. Really? Yeah, stare, stare at the camera or... T- do what I want? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. That's hairy. So here's the deal. I'm trying to build my, uh, I don't know, I'm an influencer now. <laughs> iHeartRadio. Should I look at you or the camera? Hey. Camera Whatever one, you want to do. iHeartRadio does not call me a talk show host anymore. I'm called an influencer, which is ironic because I'm 46. And all these little kids want to be influencers. And I am one and don't know shit about being an influencer. Right? I can cuss, right? Cussing? I think so. Okay. I think you can. This is our first ever YouTube hit. You bring me a beer? Thank you. Yeah. So if there's... First ever YouTube... If there's any glitches or any issues, you know, it's learning pains. So, growing pains. Right. This is the first time we've ever done this. In 10 years when I'm a multimillionaire, and this is a national show, and it's all tight and professional, and we've got amazing graphics, and we're filming out of New York or whatever... This will be historical, this what we're doing here right now. Right, Puma? This, this is where it all began. Oh, you bet your ass. It's like watching The Who start writing a new record. <laughs> that's how big that's, this is. That's, that's, a, that's a high bar, but okay. I get the analogy. Well, do I need to introduce everybody? Are they all, Anyone who gives a shit about tuning into our YouTube page knows who we are, no? Yes? Yeah, well, we should probably like... All right, this is DJ LG. Map. DJ LG is the only former board op that I have on our terrestrial radio show. That had two stints. Two. Two stints. Yep. And this is the biggest Puma, Sam Freeze, who's the current board op. Uh, board manager. Wait a minute. Stu- studio. Studio coordinator. Studio coordinator. Studio coordinator. Our, on, earlier today on our, sh- our radio show, it came up that these millennials don't like to be called what they are. Like, we're not allowed to call you a stewardess. Not allowed to say you work in the soup kitchen. You're you're a culinary advisor. There you go. It just happens to be in the in 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 the homeless shelter. You just got to church it up a little bit. Yeah, I wouldn't call it churching it. I call it pussing it up. Meh. Pussing it up. Just giving it a little more, little more, elevate it higher than it really is. How we got started on this, and it's so easy to bag on your generation. The only reason I do that is because it prevents me from, I don't have to bag on my own, which is probably one of the worst. Not oh yeah, the worst. no. Boomers are the worst. Meh. We're right. We're second. Zoomers might have an argument. Well, see, they're just kids, though. Give (laughs) them a chance to get older. Yeah, we'll see how that turns out. Yeah, yeah. So we went to a ranch today and did some ranch handing. And I was told that you're no longer supposed to say ranch hand. LG was there. They they prefer ranch manager. It's not the preferred nomenclature. You're out there shit-kicking on a ranch, (laughs) driving around in a fucking Polaris. Moving herds of cattle. You're not managing anything. Well, fuck. LG had the drone out. I mean, like... A, he more, he did more managing of that ranch 100%. than they did. That's he, a goddamn he, ranch hand. He certainly covered more fucking ground. There's a snake in my boot. That's a ranch hand, right? So I don't want to offend them, but we got to talking about how we've changed what jobs... We've changed descriptors, and we should. There's a lot of descriptors that should be changed. Well, certainly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't call it the titty bar, right? right. That we should probably that? evolve. Uh, yeah, we, we've evolved. Oh, we, yeah, we've evolved. Where it's not the titty bar. It's the tea bar. No, it's a, it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's an exotic dance club, right? Man. Even that, yeah. Yeah, exotic dance club. As no, well. love you long no, time. No, <laughs> there are words that I used to say on the radio show for iHeart. On uh, Clear Channel. Please, tell me. Give me a list of these. Gay. Yeah, that one checks out. Yag. I used to use the word yag. <laughs> I don't As, use that word anymore. Yeah. I, I think it's offensive, right? Look, I would okay, it was, side it, with you it, and, and the rest of history. We used to say that things were yag, right? We didn't literally mean homosexual. Correct. We meant, okay, like if you and I, if you, you here, you want to drink in my beer? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink after it. I just put my mouth on it. Mm-hmm. Take a drink of that. Beer. Mm-hmm. We just shared two dudes, two heterosexual men, just shared a beer. In the old days, this was yag. Oh, okay. It's it's gay backwards, and it rhymes with right. a very derogatory, a very highly <laughs> offensive yeah, term. Yeah. Mm. And that word took off. You remember the days of yag? Oh yeah. And I don't like that word. So and that was on air bit back in the day. Yeah, I Damn. called things yag. <laughs> 
2007, 2008, 2009. Yeah. I evolved as a human um, for good reasons. So there are words and phrases and things. And the only reason I say the word now to you is because I'm explaining to you the story that need to be outlawed and removed from our society, right? But then there's some things that I think are, they get taken way too far, such as ranch hand. Well, that's not that doesn't mean slave or yeah. indentured servant <laughs> sure. or serf, right? This doesn't mean ranch hand. You're helping. You're giving a helping hand here on the ranch. I never knew until today it was seen as potentially offensive to said. I have ranch no idea. Manager. But uh, but here's the thing: a CEO of a ranch told us that it's preferred now to call them ranch managers. And so even though I'm, I'm goofing here. I don't want to offend anybody because I'm just a I'm just a dumbass redneck Mexican who went to public school and made C's and I have had a lot of evolution that I needed to do over the years and who am I to tell people what they're not supposed to be called you, you and we get so fucking bogged down with labels I hate labels anyway that's why I don't I hate telling uh, uh, don't here's just what I need to be called oh god you nah. know it's an ass whip but there are some that are that mean. There are some that are highly offensive, some that are very derogatory, and you shouldn't say those things. Don't you agree? I do, you but... Do, but some things are a little over the top because you can abuse anything. No question. And there are people that take advantage of this and abuse it. But I also tend to agree when we talk about said words that don't necessarily need to be continued on. It's sure. not about canceling said word or removing it from... Uh, like making it illegal because to say we're soft. it. It's because we're soft. It's offensive. Correct. And it and should it, be taken away. But it should still be protected for idiots and who, whatever type of person that is that chooses to use that, whether the slur is the covering the gambit. For, you know, If you want to be a bad person, you're still free to say that word. You're just yeah. going to be held accountable for it. And that's a lot of what we're getting when it comes to canceling words now or saying Correct. it should be left out. It's not, no, not... If you still want to do it, go for it. It's a free country, but we're going to hold you accountable for that. You can say whatever you want to. Whatever happens after you say whatever you want to is not up to you. Correct. That's when it's out of your hands. Correct. And if and if if it, if you don't like the fact that society is evolving right. like that okay. and removing words from sure. society's vocabulary, yeah. then look, we all know what the obvious terms are that are that are awful, but there are some that are that are to me, seems like I didn't. I, I had to be told that this is offensive, or we should. We've evolved. Oh, there's it. way more. It gray may be not areas. even offensive, but just we've, we've evolved. We don't call it this anymore. A stewardess. Do you use the term stewardess ever? I tend to go. I guess flight attendant is the is also, what I've always known them as. And though. we have a lot of men now yeah. that work on airplanes, and they're not an S. They're not a stewardess. Well, what's that would a, be a steward? What's a secretary referred to as now? Like in hiring post, because I don't even think it's secretary anymore. I think it's like really? office manager, or so, I swear, I think it's I think oh, it's shit. office See, manager. I, again, I'm still I'm still right? in my evolution phase. Yeah, yeah, I'm, an office I, manager. I'm pretty sure because they they didn't even want the stigma of putting that on a job posting. As really? just secretary. Secretary. So it's 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 an overinflation Why? of the responsibility in our stupid minds, in our our dumb caveman minds. We think of Lonnie Anderson, 1982, big titties, big blonde hair. Oh, yeah. We think of stup Mad Men. Stupid, yeah. doing whatever Bothman tells me to do. And it, that's why we, because we took that word and made it bad. It, the, the, word, the word itself's not bad. It was never meant to be bad when the word first started getting used whenever it got used by Dale Carnegie or whoever. Yeah, and then the abuse of said and the position. Of, right. Cocaine was not stigma. meant to be abused either, but eventually cocaine began to get abused. It's and called we, cocaine. And we had to outlaw it, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay. hell, cocaine was in our soft drink. <laughs> like, sure. cocaine was a prescribed medicine. And I would argue there are worse drugs and toxins and things we consume every day now that are worse than cocaine, but we haven't outlawed those. But, again, I'm not offended by very much at all, but I certainly don't want to use things that are going to offend other people, even though I don't get offended very easy. I do think, though, that ranch hand falls more into the... <laughs> ranch hand. Falls more into the <laughs> stewardess position of the gray light, area. The lighten up, Francis. Yeah, yeah, it feels closer to that than right. uh, the, the 
14 year old content okay. from the show. These are the problems that we dealt with today. Um, you want to get a little deeper with who we are since it's, I don't know, it's technically the first YouTube show we've done. Yeah, let's launch in. But I assume 99% of anybody who gives two shits about watching <coughs> this first episode already knows who we are anyway. Do you want to tell our stories? Do we, should we do that? I mean, I can talk about me all night long <laughs> if you want me to. I'm happy to. I think what do you want with, to do? I think produce, with the, damn it, produce. I think with the 14th anniversary of the sh- on-air show it this is, week. Yeah, the week it, we're filming this, yeah. It only up. feels appropriate with the launch of this yeah. to tie back into I cuz I want to hear a little deeper into the like what that first month was like and now with the perspective of 14 years month later. Month 1? Yeah. Oh god, month 1. Especially now that you're telling me what what the some of the bits were back then in 07 that have progressed to right. oh, well man. leave the show. When did you join the show? When, when did you start? Did you are you a day one listener, Lawrence? No, I'm not I'm not a day one listener cuz I was a I was in San Marcos when you first started down okay. here. I was still in All right. What what year did you start? 08? 07. 07. 07. Yeah. So that was my last year at at Texas State. Okay, and you were too stoned to know any better. Yeah, probably so. Probably so. Yeah. I mean, it's your last year at Texas State. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're smoking so, reefers. First of all, I was the I was like the third or the fourth choice for this job. They had hired a guy called Rob Thompson who works for Ashtown, which is what we call our competitor. If you want to call him a competitor, it's more like we're the Globe Trotters and they're the New Jersey Generals. But if you want to call him a competitor, you can. There was a guy called Rob Thompson and his brother. I don't remember. Jason, I guess. Yeah. Those guys were going to do that afternoon show because there was a guy There was a guy in town uh, called Jeff and a guy called Wally, and they did the afternoon show. Oh, I know ticket. Wally. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. And they were horrible, and <laughs> they did some sort of terrible <laughs> bit, and they spur- they used it as an excuse to get rid of them. They did a racist bit with Allen Iverson. Like, they had an Allen Iverson impersonator call into the station oh, and try to score yeah. weed. Okay. And then, you know what's funny about that, that is? Was... You, know much, well, you know how much worse I've done than that over the years? <laughs> I've done way worse than racism. <laughs> <laughs> They had they had Popovich on their show once a week too, the Pop that's Show, shocking. and then that's, that's that was the last time he ever came on the right. Ticket Seven Sixty hey, thanks, thanks a lot, assholes. Wow. Thanks a lot, dicks. I never get to get Pop on wow. because of y'all. Anyway, but I never would have got the job if they had not gotten fired. So they were going to hire these Thompson brothers who were had a little bit of a name at the time in this town, San Antonio. And at the midnight hour, they turned it down. The whole time... Go home and get your fucking shine box. The whole time, they were using Clear Channel as leverage when they were talking to another company, eSports or something, eSports, in Orlando. They moved to Florida. At the midnight hour, I mean, they had already verbally agreed to take over that slot. Sports Talk San Antonio is what it was called. And at the midnight hour, called Peter Bolger, the new program director, and Matt Martin, who's still our boss to this day, our big, big boss, and said, never mind, we're out. Screwed, screwed us. Damn. Screwed the managers. And so they called another guy, I think, called maybe, I don't want to, I don't, maybe I'm, I think they, you ever heard of Chad Dukes? The name sounds familiar. I think Chad Dukes got offered that job, too. I was the third option or the fourth, right? And so they flew me down. And when they fly you somewhere, as you know, radio stations are cheap as fuck. If they're going to fly you down, they're serious about hiring you. Yeah, so that's I a got level called, of interest. Hey, we'd like to fly you in to interview you. Okay. So I ran out and bought me a George W. Bush power blue suit and got on their airplane and flew down here. And, and I took it very serious. N- had no idea that I was probably the... Th- I, they were desperate because they had their other guys had backed out last minute. They needed to do something. And I interviewed with them. Right, there's a guy called Tim Merriman, oh, the who great. tells a story. He still works for W O A I Radio, our big brother down the hall. Tim likes to tell a story of because he was the assistant program director in those days, and he Peter Bolger, who was the PD, was torn about whether or not to hire this Dallas kid with his Fort Worth accent. How old were you at this point? What was that? Thirty three. Okay. Yeah, early thirties. Yeah, younger, younger than you. Yeah. And they were scared. He was a little bit, he was hesitant for obvious reasons. I understand. But a point, apparently, and I don't even remember this, but apparently during the interview process, I guess Tim asked me, so you, you're a Dallas Mavs fan. You grew up a Mavs fan. Yeah. You're one of those MFFLs. I mean, sure. 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 If we hire you, 
can you be a Spurs fan? Oh, he goes, he goes, can you not be a Mavs fan and be a Spurs fan? I go, dude, you fucking hire me? <laughs> you give me this job? I'll renounce the Mavericks. I'll be, I'll, I'll renounce the Mavericks for life. Fuck Mavs fan for life. I'll <laughs> renounce the Mavs for life today. And I'll do you another solid. I'll have a I'll have an exorcist priest come into the studio and exorcise the Mavericks demons <laughs> out of my soul. Tim likes to tell the story that that he that's when he told Bolter this dude this is the guy this dude's got something yeah this guy's got balls he's gonna come in here and do good radio, and they hired me, and I turned the job down. Damn. They offered me the job for X amount of dollars, and I decided well if I'm gonna uproot my family, I had a young family at the time. If I'm going to uproot my family, leave my hometown where I'm born and raised, where I'm comfortable, I was this close to becoming a teacher. <laughs> if I was going to all of a sudden shit on, I went through the entire teaching certificate program at North Texas State. All I had to do, I was going to go student, student teach at teach. Plano East That's High it. School in Plano, Texas. Yeah, good old pass. That's all I had to do, and I was going to be a full-time teacher at the Plano ISD. It went from that to overnight, well, wait a minute, let's consider this radio gig that all of a sudden came up out of nowhere, third choice, because I thought they had blown me off, because I had applied for the job earlier that summer and got nowhere. Yeah. But two dudes turned it down. The irony that 14 years later, you could have, in an alternate universe, be a teacher in Plano ISD. I'd have been fired years ago. <laughs> For talking dirty in front of the students. No question. No question. They would have yeah. ran your ass out of there. It wouldn't have been good. Yeah. So, I was scared. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it or not. So if I, 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 count, I, I didn't turn it down. I countered with more money. Well, And I thought, that's it. They're, like, they're going to say, fuck you. And they hired me anyway. Hey, so, life's a risk, carnal. But then I said, okay, give me, give me 48 hours to think about it. And I'm sure Peter was like, fuck this guy. Yeah, just Dude, dragging us. With the job or not, <laughs> you know. And so I went to my big boss at ESPN Radio, Pete Ditz, and gave him a chance to keep me. And I went in there to talk to this douchebag general manager at ESPN Radio in Dallas, who, by the way, is no longer in this business, and that radio station's gone under. Had they made me the afternoon drive host, they would not be out of business today. Fuck you, ESPN Radio. So I go to Pete Ditz and give him a chance to match the offer and keep me. Good luck, Mike. Have a great... Uh, oh, you're going to do great down there. Yeah, I'm looking forward to great things out of you down there. Oh, South my God. Texas. I can't. I, I just know you're going to do well. Good luck. That was the way of saying, no, we're not matching. Get yeah. out of my office. Yeah. And that was it. I, that was done, the yeah. answer. And I called Peter Bolger. I didn't take the 48 hours and told him yes. He sent me a contract the next day. And I said yes. And I signed it. And that was it. That's how I got this job. So I get this job. 30 days into the job, I almost got fired. <laughs> First of all, we had an exorcism live on the air of my first show. <laughs> well, you, a you're, for real exorcism, not a bullshit one, a real exorcism. You're a man of your word. If you you're going to do through. something, you do it. <laughs> you do it. I had an exorcism, and I renounced my Mavs fandom forever. You know how I feel about Dirk. I love Dirk. Sure. But the Mavs can go to hell. Sure. The Mavs could fold today, sure. and I'd be fine with me. I would not pee on their grave, shit on it. Yeah, and I take the route that there's... Uh, there's room to root for more than one of 30 teams. Like, I, I, like I, I, won't, <laughs> I don't need an exorcism to remove my Mavs fandom, but right. there will always be a soft spot for that. And that's okay. But they're growing up, the only reason there was hatred for this team mm -hmm. was because they were so much better than the team I had in my area to grow up with. Like, as a basketball fan, yeah. that was the best form of basketball I had ever seen. To yeah. that point in okay. my life, and I didn't give two shits. Right, I could have been. They could have been a job in Chicago, Philadelphia, you LA, go. Sacramento. I would. Oh, Kings fan. <laughs> Fuck yeah, go Kings. Yeah, no, I could see in that one. It was about I me, could, homie. Yeah, I, that one I could never. <laughs> like, it was about my it would career. Take a, it would still take a team that I would respect. <laughs> now I fell in love with the Spurs really fast. That's easy, and that helped. Yeah. But I would have I would have done the same thing for the Lakers, Celtics, Nets, Knicks, Brooklyn Nets, whoever. It wouldn't, wouldn't have mattered. Miami You're Heat. You're Brooklyn Nets. Hey, hey, right here, see this nipple here? Let me guess. Here, give, you, got a, you got a marker? I, give me a marker. There's one behind you somewhere. Okay, grab that marker. <laughs> and this is the, and this, and on day, day two of being at the station, they took me into the sales room. So they introduced me to the sales team. And I said, here's the deal. In front of all these executives and upper <laughs> managers and salespeople, I said, here's the thing. I pulled my shirt up. Right here, over this nipple, it says four. <laughs> over this nipple, it says 
say. If you got the money, I got the time. I am for sale. What do we get for ten dollars? <laughs> so it was about me, dude. I don't give two shits about the teams we're talking about. Understandable. Here. Now it helped that I did. I did. I don't. Man, I don't love everybody at the Spurs. Just like every organization, sure. there's a bunch of assholes and dicks that work for the Spurs. Sure. And there's a lot of badass motherfuckers that work for the Spurs, too. Same thing in Dallas and all those other cities. And all, I mean, every yeah, team. Yeah, just the ratios are different. Sure. There's some, de- there's some total douche noggles that work for everybody. There's yeah. some great dudes. It's not about the team. It's about individuals for me. And it was about my career. And this was an opportunity to take this job and come down here and prove to these assholes in Dallas that they should have kept me. That's what I always thought. That like, was the motivation. As right? as someone that, you know, in growing up in Dallas, hearing you on the air up there as a secondary role in, on the shows that I would hear you in, yeah. and I would think... You know when, like when that next opening is, yeah. that guy's going. I mean, you see it all the time in in yeah. stations you follow when people get a little bit more and a little bit more, yeah. and then all of a sudden you're off, and then about six years later, I would end up moving down here. I mean, like going from high school, graduating in '04, yeah, and having heard you on Dallas radio then, mm-hmm. and then moving to San Antonio in 2011. And having one of the first sports fans, f- sports fan buddies I met say, "You got to listen to Ticket Seven Sixty. You got to listen to this Mike Taylor guy." And I was like, "Yeah, that's okay." That so name. that's where he went. Yeah, I recognized it. And so immediately, and when I started listening to you, I could. Yeah. My first thought was, "How the fuck did Dallas like how, how like?" <laughs> and so then yeah, to yeah, hear yeah. and then to hear you have more bring in more of how you connected with San Antonio, it was like, no, fuck, like, he's way, like... Oh, that, that's like, a whole different way show. Way more fitting, yeah. How it fit in down here, right. and how me and the city just kind of fit, that's Correct. a different show, yeah. and I, I get teary-eyed See, talking, and, telling that But story. that's this week, though, man. That's the 14 I know, years, yeah, I know, that's what I know. we're going to get on right. Thursday. So, day one was an exorcism. Day two was um, the uh, showing all the sales of my nipples, I'm going to take a call. This is my nanny. I'm going to take a call from her. She's let me know this got the kids. Hey, Kirsten. Hi. Hi. Everybody good? Yeah. Oh, it's my kids. What are you guys doing? Good. Okay. How was school? Good. Okay, good. That's it. You called. What? We played football and it was super fun. Oh, cool. You didn't play tackle, did you? No, we played two finger. Okay. Okay. Cool. That sounds good. It's, uh, we called it touch when I was growing up. Two finger, wait, two touch, or two hand, or two finger touch? Okay, cool. That'll work. Sure. Oh, we played two hand. Okay. No, say hi to about. Big Sam's here. Can you say hi to him? Hi. Okay. Hey, can I call you back in a minute? Yeah. Okay. Let me call you back. I'm. Are you home? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna call you back in a few minutes. Okay. Bye. Okay. Later. Bye. By the way, that's funny that they called me. They're calling me, telling me they're home from school. They're not born if I don't take this job. Because I met their mother. See, I get emotional. I met their mother in this town. I got married in this town. They're born at Stone Oak Methodist Hospital in this town. That These people, these twins, don't exist if I'm not the third choice and take the job because Pete did said have a good life and good luck down there. Crazy, right? It's yeah. insane. I, I I rarely think about that because it's weird. Well, you can't, can't get lo- you can't get wrapped up in constantly Correct, thinking about the entire, ripples of sure, choices. We all life. have that, yeah. right? I know, but it's still, I mean, these babies aren't born if I don't take this job. It's crazy. Yeah, it's impossible not to think so, about that. Day one exorcism. Day two, <laughs> show all the sales girls my titties and write for sale over my boobies. Your tees. I was serious because I had a one year contract, man. One year deal with a company option. I had 365 days to make this work or I was going to go back to Fort Worth with my tail between my legs and go back to, and I, at least I had the teaching as a fallback, but I want to come down here and fail. You know, I'm arrogant for, for me to fail would go against my narcissistic principles. Yeah. That just wouldn't be appropriate. Correct. So I had to make this work. So it was balls to the wall, full throttle. So what I did was in that first month, the thing that I remember the most was, and I took a lot of hell, got, I got crushed by a lot of people in town. All the TV people hated me. Um, the assholes on the other radio stations hated me because I was cocky and they didn't like it. And 
I'm still doing radio and their asses are all fired and out of, and not doing job, not doing shows. It's hard to argue with the results. I mean, so, so what I did was, and I, this is why I almost got terminated. Although my, my, my boss, Matt Martin went to bat for me, which is why that's my boy right now to this day. Big Matt, you were, you'll meet Matt at the, as we oh, film yeah, this, tomorrow. we're getting ready to go to the Spurs opener, which is tomorrow as we film this, and Matt's coming. You ready to meet Big Matt? Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, hopefully he hangs he's, around for the whole game. He's your boss's 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 boss. That's where we're going to go watch the Spurs with tomorrow night. Four layers of boss. You'll be fine. You're good at this kind of shit. Yeah, you don't I, I like think I'll it, get but you're fine. good at it. I think I'll get by just fine. So that first month, what I decided to do is part part of my dunk is announce your presence with authority. <laughs> yeah. And Bill I wanted, Walton. I wanted to learn the city. I wanted to do a bunch of stuff. And so I decided I created this bit where I was gonna do and I'm a big local TV news junkie and decided to, and a lot of people watching this have already heard this, but it's fun, it's a funny story. And I almost got I almost got fired. <laughs> I decided that first month I was on the year, I'm going to spend five days each weeknight, right, Monday through Friday, with all four of the TV news channels. They're 10 o'clock news because my show was 3 to 6. Uh, I'm going to watch the 10 o'clock news tonight, every night, and I chose, you know, News 4 WOAI. Watch that. And then on Friday, so I guess I watched Monday through Thursday because Friday is when I gave my review. Yeah. Right, so I watched Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, came in on Friday and gave a review of that station. Watched that station religiously all week long and evaluated everybody and gave my synopsis and was... I'm sure they ap- appreciated the outsider the first month he's in town, just sure. giving his full sure. review of their work. What I thought was good, I said was good. What I thought was fine was fine. And what I thought was ass, I obliterated their asses. Obliterated their asses. You have to. Well, yeah. You got to start to announce your presence with authority. That's right. And I and I, and I was sincere about like the negative. I meant it, but I was hard about it. Yeah, it was still constructive, though. Taylor, you got to stir the stick on occasion. Was one of the things I was told by one of my mentors in this business. The mantra. So I did that four weeks in a row, right? So I did. You know, I did. Uh, I think I did Channel Twenty Nine K A B B, the Fox station. Did them first. They were spare. It was terrible. I've not watched them since. Now, if they want to hire me, <laughs> I'll consider it because your ratings will finally go up after all these years. Uh, Ken's Five, I watched them. I liked Ken. Were you here for Ken Maru? Ken Maru, his last couple of times? He was old school. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Old yeah, yeah. school, Anchor. Hi, I'm Ken Maru. I, all my hair is naturally brown. And look at my amazing teeth. Did Ken's Five. It was okay. Um, watched KSAT, thought it was, I thought KSAT pound for pound was the best in the city. There were, or were there other anchors on other stations that were better? Sure. Other reporters here and there that were better, but pound for pound, the Floyd Mayweather of the city, the best pound for pound station, in my opinion, was KSAT. And so they got a pretty good review. Well, the week that I, inter- the week that I watched WOAI was the week that I almost got shit canned. In those days, we were WOAI was still a partner of Clear oh, Channel. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We were their partner. That was when Steph worked there, or a little bit. I mean, still right before. We're about to hear from your wife, by the yeah. way. Yeah, we want to hear your story next. So, and I didn't give two. I, I yes, I knew that WOAI was a partner with our radio cluster and I at Clear Channel Radio in those days, but I wasn't going to ease up on their asses. I w- this, th- that's when I realized that a lot of the mentality in this city at that time anyway was very small market oriented. Well, we're just we're not going to eat our own. Fuck you. If it's terrible, get them off the air and get some people that are good in here. You know, I rip our own, I rip our own colleagues to this day on radio stations. You know, I mean, you know, I just do. It is, it is what it is. My listeners will know if I'm full of shit. I'm not going to come on here and pump sunshine up nobody's ass because we're partners. And so I had to be just as fair with WOAI television as all the other three. And I said some th- and what I here's what I did say. Randy Beamer is the best news anchor in this market, and it ain't close. Yeah, he's Mike Trout on the Angels. Yeah. They didn't get mad about that, and they didn't give me any credit for that. There was a woman on the air that I said, and, and, and looking back on it, I was too harsh. I could have criticized her work without being as ugly as I was. I made a remark about her having bulging eyes that I thought were going to hit me on TV. Unfortunate. Very unfortunate. unfortunate. Very sorry. Should not have said it. And her husband, David Chancellor, 
who to this day is one of their big time news anchors to this day. Sure, of course. Got pissed off. That's his wife. I don't blame him for getting pissed off. Yeah, I would get pissed off too. Sure. And he called me on the phone. And I actually appreciated that. Because rather than just crush me, tear me a new one to other people, David Chancellor earned my respect immediately. And I was wrong, by the way. I was too harsh. It was over the top. I was trying to announce my presence with authority and I got carried away. A little away. too much authority. I got carried away. David called me up and calmly told me, you're an asshole. For That's my wife. And that's bullshit. And... I don't care if you criticize her. I don't care if you say something negative about her. That's your opinion. You're entitled to it. It is what it is. But that was over the top, and that's bullshit. I'm like, dude, I, I, I feel you. on. You're right, man. You're right. Yeah. And I'm sorry. Yeah. You know what? You're right. I was wrong. And I went on the air and admitted it. Nobody else in town ever called me and said and called me up. David did. And I respected that guy from ever since then. He stood up for his wife, and he was right, and I was wrong. And... WOAI television wasn't as classy as handling it as David Chancellor was. Now, their upper management, a bunch of dickweeds, probably a bunch of assholes, a <laughs> bunch of pompous, suit-wearing, know-nothing sons of bitches. I keep forgetting that we're on a podcast because when you say something like dickweeds, I'm so used to being like, holy fuck, where's the drop button? What the fuck? Dickweeds, Gen X. That. That's a Gen X term. <laughs> Stick your cock up her ass. Dude, God almighty. <laughs> That's why we need a drop button for the drop button. We need a dump button for the drop button. Yeah, correct. The managers at OAI were pissed off. And they called Matt Martin, my boss's boss's boss. I met Matt for four seconds when I shook his hand and he congratulated me on the job and he signed my contract. And my go- and I didn't I didn't want to ever see that guy again. There's no reason to see your boss's boss's boss. There's correct. no reason to. Yeah. They called Big Matt. This new guy is awful. He's violated the, our policies. He's throwing us under the bus. We're partners. How dare he? They didn't give two shits about the negative stuff I said about the other three stations. Well, of course not. That helps. I mean. And they made Matt go to a meeting so they could. And Matt's like, I, what are you talking about? You mean the sports guy? I mean, it's, it's a little old ticket. He didn't give two shits about the ticket. We're just a little AM stepchild <laughs> in the corner. That sports guy? You're mad at him. I just hired him. That's like what we're talking ago. about. <laughs> Seriously, I gotta go to. I gotta go meet over this kid. Fine. So he shows up, and I think I can tell this story because it's been so long now. And probably most of those assholes are long out of the room. Sinclair bought them. I'm sure. Yeah, all the they're long have gone. Matt tells a story where he's sitting there, and they're like, "We want you to hear this. It's, we're just appalled. We're just embarrassed. We can't believe that we're partners. This is over the top radio. I don't know who this guy thinks he is." And they played the segment of me throwing OAI under the bus. They played the entire review, which I also said Randy Bean was the best positive. news anchor in the in the market. Matt tells the story where he had to turn his head away and and concentrate on the ficus tree in the room <laughs> because he was going to laugh his balls off. <laughs> and that guy in that meeting said, "Here, I, I agree. It's it's harsh, but it's funny as hell." And I'm not firing him. And he stood up for me, dude. My boss's boss's boss stood up for me, you know, when he didn't have, he didn't really have to. There who, wasn't who, even that much of an investment yeah, yet. Right. Yeah. Who cared if they fired me three weeks in? He give a shit. But the guy, he believed in what I was doing. He believed that we needed an edge. He believed that I had a plan, you know, and there were days where they were, there were days where the program director, Peter, and I, Peter's one of my heroes to this day because that's the guy that hired me. He's the guy that recommended the man hire me. Um, there were days where he wasn't sure if I was going to last six months. And I got annihilated. Everybody hated me. All the media hated me. You know, a lot of times you get a talk gig and a lot of talk show hosts will go to a new city and they'll reach out to the other media members. Hey, let's go to dinner and tell me about the city. Fuck that shit. I ain't doing that shit. I'm, not that I'm trying to be enemies with all of them. You know, but I mean, I'm, you come to me, I'm Mike fucking Taylor. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, know, you want to have you call me, you know. But that was the attitude I had to have on a one year contract. You know, I had to do that. I had to be. I had to do that. I had to be me, which I still am that way. And I've been able to get away with all that all these years because this company stood up for me. I know that I'm, I'm, I'm not I'm not speaking for anybody else's trajectory or career, but those people stood up for me earlier, early in my career when I didn't have to. You know, and so I've, I've been loyal to those people. I've had opportunities to leave, and I didn't want to because I had a nice, comfortable thing here, and it was good. And you just don't, you don't get that connection with the city. You don't have that kind of rapport. 
you know, and, and the scenario that we had, it just the fact that we succeeded as long as we have, it's just all borrowed time. If I got fired tomorrow, that's cool. I've, I've got no, I mean, golly, I mean, look what we've done, you know. Um, so it would be ironic to specifically get fired tomorrow. Matt, at Matt does a bit and 3, fires me that day. Three thousand nine hundred and ninety nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we that's celebrate fine. at the Spurs game. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. So that my first month was chaotic. Um, it was day to day. I hacked off corporate, hacked off, and I, and Matt had to tell his corporate guys, "Don't listen to this guy. He's local. You shouldn't be listening to him anyway." We were the whole company was based in San Antonio when I got the job in two thousand seven. We're a little bit spread around now, and we also had and we also had Clear Channel Outdoor. They was all based here, and so the word got out that there's this cocky ass Dallas D bag on the air. So I'm getting crushed by all the other radio stations. You know, uh, I, I'm getting crushed by, I, I, I pissed off all the TV stations because TV people are very, very sensitive. You can say 99 good things about him, but that hundredth thing that you say that's wrong. Thing. That's it. He's an a-hole. He hates us. That, that's just wrong. It's not, it's not real. It's not human. But the listeners are the ones that kept me on the air. Through all that, through pissing off corporate, through pissing off WOAI's idiot out-of-touch suits, through alienating all the other media in the city, the people that thought, this fucking guy's crazy. I'm going to listen to him. He's got something. It are the listeners. The listeners listened. And the ratings from when I took over, which granted weren't, weren't good, quintupled, sintupled. I, I don't know the words. I went to public school. And I earn, I've, I've been earning contracts ever since. We've never lost a ratings book against ESPN. We've never lost a ratings book when CBS had a sports station, and that totally failed. That was the first place I ran a board. <laughs> right, and they should have put you on and not Wally. Eh. And maybe it would have lasted a little longer. Every other sports station in this town has looked up to our show over the years. And it's not because of me. It's because of us. It's been a conglomeration. <laughs> it, you know, and I, I, I'm sounding like corporate Mike here. The, the company stood by me through those lean days when they weren't sure what they were getting into. They have, the, and, you know, our, we've got partners, our, our sponsors, and we, I, we just went and spent time at a cattle ranch today. You know, who the hell knows what's next, you know? You, you could put Howard Stern in, in this, and our salespeople. You could go bring Howard Stern, Very key. put him in my chair, and if you can't sell Howard, then he, Howard's going to get fired. So it's just, it's been a... It's been a one big, huge, cosmic amalgamation of alignment of stars where the listeners dug it, the bosses stuck by me, um, the city just took a shine to what we do. I don't know why. I have no idea. I'm, 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 I'm not, I, maybe, I, maybe this doesn't happen in any other city and I do wind up teaching, but San Antonio wound up working. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's stupid. It's silly. It's, it's weird, and I'm appreciative. I feel like those are all apt words for it. Stupid and silly and ridiculous. It really is. And you just don't. You just don't have this. You know, you just don't. You yeah. don't I mean, how many hosts have lived and worked in 10 cities, and chased money, and spent time fired, and laid off, and had to move careers? Yeah, in a heartbeat, too. I mean, and, it can change so Yeah, fast. and how many assholes can up and just move out of the city and live somewhere else and not miss a beat in that town. And then do that f in four other cities. Right. That's <laughs> yeah. insane. Yeah. With all the moving we've done? Yeah. All right. All right, I want to put your wife on for a minute. Throw it off. Cool. That, Steph, you still cool with that? Okay, cool. Because we want to get to know this dude. I know his story. This is Stephanie Freeze. My first question for you is, you're step all the way up to that thing. These things are pretty intimate. you got to, you know... Question number one, why are you married to him? Because he's awesome. Oh, listen to that shit. He is Short pretty answer. he is pretty freaking awesome. And I think if I were a chick, I'd dig him too. No bull, no bullshit. I really do think that. He's got some intangibles. <laughs> he's got some weaknesses, but don't we all? You know? Oh. All right. I want to know. I've I've heard his story. I want to know your your what's your story? How'd y'all wind up together, you and Puma? So when I'm from Lubbock, West Texas. Graduated from Texas Tech Red Raiders. Met his... Sure. <laughs> <laughs> two down. Um, met his hometown friend, Brennan, um, guy that ended up marrying us, and we became friends. The guy that married you? 
Mm-hmm. Oh, he did the ceremony? Yeah. A mutual buddy. He made him wear all white. <laughs> Is he a priest or a preacher? From the... He was for one day. <laughs> <laughs> he joined spaghetti the Church monster. of the Flying Spaghetti Monsters Are you for serious? one day. Yeah, this is correct. why I love you people so much. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. So I met wow. one of the small town Glen Rose kids, and then you know they're all still connected. Okay. I so got in somehow. You met him through who? Brennan. Through this dude, Brennan. Mm-hmm. I'll be damned. First impression of the Poomer. <laughs> no bull. <laughs> You're married. It's fine. You can be honest now. You wound up marrying. Um, intrigued. I guess. Uh, my first impression... Well, he's got huge hands. Oh, he does. Yeah. <laughs> he does have big hands. Uh, but he was um, maybe not in a very normal state of mind when I first met him. So. Well, I was it, fucked up vomiting in her house in Lubbock the very really? first time. Oh, it Love was, it first time. It was bad, man. Dude. It was a really long time ago. So you're in some strange girl's house you don't know, uh-huh. sick. Uh-huh. Sure. Did y'all had, had y'all talked before he's puking in your house? No. Are you serious? No, sir. Good lord. No, his friend called uh, another friend from Glen Rose called yeah. and was like, "Hey, I've got these two dudes with me. We don't know where to go. You have a house. Can we come chill for a while?" And I yeah. was like, "Yeah, sure. I'm not doing shit. Come over." Okay. So they came over and yeah, they were uh, okay on and another you, level. And then you had sex after he cleaned up. Oh no, that we didn't have sex for many years. <laughs> many, many years okay. after that. Oh no. No, that was a bad night. Yeah. Uh, okay, so so how did you did you like did you didn't you didn't see him again? How did mm-hmm. okay, well how that how the hell do you wind up seeing him again? Well, so again What are the odds? Mutual friend Brennan. Um, okay. he and I became really, really good friends. Okay. And y'all college. were not boyfriend and girlfriend, you and Brennan. Okay, just nope. friends, and he happened to know this dude. Right. So he, this guy was okay, kind of just flailing out there, well, waiting, waiting to come back into your circle <laughs> at some point. Yeah. So he apparently had come to Lubbock that first time, met, you know, came over to, you know, get fucked up at my house. Yeah. And then um, we ran into each other. Brennan has a lake house, so we'd see each other there every once in a while. And okay. then there were a few concerts. You know, things okay. like that where we would, like, run in and then... I see. When we really, really hit it off, it was probably, what, 2009? Yeah, yeah. at South by Southwest. Oh, and it an was Austin like, romance. We okay. hadn't seen each other for a while, and then we just never stopped talking after. Okay. Did you like her at all before the Austin experience? Did you know that... Or did it, it, it just kind of happen, Pooms? The... When did you think, oh, shit, the this ain't first, good. This like, is bad for my scene. The first three times I met her, I was not in the mindset to really be looking to like anybody. I was Well, no longer pretty, she wasn't that impressed. Exactly. So it yeah. wasn't an instant. And then by, by about the second or third trip to the lake house and being around her, that mm-hmm. was kind of the moment where I was like, okay, I think she's... I think there's something, like, I definitely am attracted, but I think there's definitely more of a connection deeper than just we like five of the same bands. Like, I think it's more of a, I think now it's like, no, like, like we see the world kind of the same way. Like we have the same right. perspective of well, how we want to live our lives as chemicals people just, separate. Your chemicals just liked each other. And yeah, you can't control it, that. Sure. Whether yeah. you like the same bands or not. I'll right. tell you this though, the night that the night that I saw her on Sixth Street, it was very much a at South by at an after party, at an after show. It was like I'm sitting with my buddies out on the patio smoking a cigarette. Yeah. And I just see her walking through the crowd. And I'm like, I kind of I like turn to buddies. I'm like, we know her. Like, and usually you're sitting on 6th Street and you're wasted and you're like, oh, I think I know that person, you know? But this one, it was like, I could see her walking through. I was like, no, we definitely know her. Like, yeah. that's Steph, you know? I had okay. no idea yeah, we were yeah. both in town. And immediately I was, you know, like, she, we just made eye contact and her and her group rushed over to us. And we had, earlier we had branded my buddy's ass with a Texas cattle brand. And For so, real? I, yeah, for real. I can't so, imagine why you were attracted to this group of dudes. Wow. So yeah. our first thing was you gotta look at you gotta look at Come here, look at his you ass. You gotta look at Kylie's ass, man. We just branded it earlier and instantly yeah. stuff was like, okay, it's good to see you wow. too. But yeah. good grief. Okay. So your first non drunk moment was branding people's asses. 
I can't. No, imagine. that was still drunk. That oh, was okay. moonshine uh, drunk. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he was dating a girl from Kentucky. Oh, all right, so, so we were comparing family brews. How long after that did y'all decide to start dating exclusively? Oh, okay, this is a that's thing. That's a different question. Okay, so that was a bit of a slow slow burn too. Well, I mean, we we started like after we met back up in Austin that time, we didn't really stop talking. We would message on Facebook, even like started to text and then okay. like honestly it was kind of a slow burn. Oh yeah. And then we just okay. started to like stop seeing other people and then Aww. we end up having, Yeah, there wasn't like, really like a date where both of us were like Hey, I'm not seeing anybody else. It just kind of... We just stopped seeing other people. And didn't really <laughs> announce it to each other. It was just more of a like... That's beautiful. I love it. Yeah, that. like I think we're... Like if it... Like I'm not going to see anybody else. And if she just happens to decide that on her own also, then like I'm not going to tell her like, hey, I want to be... Ex-. Like if you... Yeah, if you, you want to be exclusive, you'll be exclusive. Just like, I mean, it'll, yeah. it'll work but itself But you didn't like out. give her an ultimatum and no, say, hey, God, dude. No, God, no. And we were always... Until... Until we moved into our apartment in February of 2011 in Leon Valley, yeah, we had never lived in the same city ever. Okay, yeah. so if you'd have told her, "Hey, by the way, I'm not dating anybody else," and she's like, "That's cool, you're my Thursday guy, but I got three other dudes," <laughs> would that have changed it? Uh, no question, it would have been like, "Oh, okay, well then I'm gonna I'm gonna get my Thursday and Friday girls okay. back okay, on cool. the that's, docket well, that's because honest. yeah, but because you're she, being honest with me." Right, and, but then she replied, "Yeah." I'm not yeah, I'm cool. I'm just us. Yeah, again, oh, I mean, it was no reply. Dude. It was just more of a, like, it, uh, you know, started to be, you know, I'm I'm road tripping to Las Vegas. You Do you want to go with me? And cool. So we would do trips like that where we would, you know, drive across the Southwest. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, my buddy got married in Vegas on a whim one weekend. And so I called her on a Wednesday, and I was like, hey, there's a really good chance my buddy is, like, Having a wedding ceremony. Is this branded Saturday. butt cheek buddy? No, this is another uh, another crazy. No, this is another thing. crazy okay. guy. Wow. Yeah, this is a uh, uh, motorcycle mechanic, Charlie, uh, house <laughs> okay. contractor. Yeah, we would stay at his house in Stephenville when we would go and like meet up when we were dating long distance. Yeah, here's what I know, and I I don't I, I'm still getting to know your your man. I don't think I mean for this dude to get married. Mm-hmm. That's for this chick to get married. See, I don't know you as well as him. <laughs> That's why it works. But this homeboy loves him some Steph. Oh. I mean, I would assume. I mean, you're getting married, but I just, he doesn't look like the dude. He's not a dude that's just gonna go get married. He's not gonna do what his homie did and go on go to Vegas and get married in a whim. He's gonna overthink it. Listen to fucking radio. Fucking Thom York. I knew it was and, only a matter of time. And overthink it. And try to talk himself out of it and to still go through with it means he had no choice because he loves you. How many years did we live together before we were married? Um, seven? A long time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like seven. seven years. So how long have you guys been together? Well, so we ran like back into each other at South by, which is kind of what I oh, nine. consider the inception. So March of 2009. The inception. Oh, and what year did y'all get married? Three, 2018. 2018. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Remember so we were married. Yeah. Cause we year. lived, we moved to San Antonio, February, 2011, ended up getting married April, April of 2018. Right. And so, yeah, now we're 10 years later. Oh, okay. Now look at them. Yeah. All right. So what would you ever leave SA? Short answer. Yes. Yeah. Okay. For, uh, for what, like a badass job. You know what's funny? Here's what I see. You had to drag him to this town, but I don't think you'd. I don't think he'd want you to leave now. It might be the other way around. It's completely. He'd be the one that would not point. want to go. It's completely. Not flipped. that you don't like the city, yeah. but I mean, you, you get another great job offer or something like that. You're gonna do it. I guess I've never felt like anywhere is like completely permanent. So yeah, I mean, yeah. I would definitely be open to leaving. If right. it were a job circumstance, whatever that looked like, like I mean, right. I don't. I don't think I would hesitate to go, but I'm not trying to leave San Antonio by any means. We love it here. You may why, this you is may, home. You may me, always yeah. have the attitude of I totally would leave, but it's thirty years still here living here, you know, but always open to it. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I think's going to happen at this yeah, point. I mean right. if you had told me when I was eighteen I would have lived in San Antonio for ten years by the time no I was thirty five. Yeah. I did not see that I just didn't see that route. I didn't see that narrative. I didn't see that future. I didn't see what 
And of course it, it was, I mean, it wasn't work that brought me here. The Steph applied to 50 jobs in TV across Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Across in media, across Just, media I in general to even be a graphic designer, like whatever I could get out of college. Wow. Right. And the one job opportunity out of all of those interviews that he drove me to was San Antonio, Texas. So, and this has been, such a, TV. it's been such a great market to me too, professionally. Like, mm-hmm. And it's like you were saying earlier, a big small town. It's the people you know and the work you put in, and that's yeah. that's recognized. And and when you're loyal to this town, boy, they're loyal back to you, yeah, boy. Yeah, I've felt that. They are absolutely loyal back to you. All right, well, that's beautiful. I've not heard any of that stuff before. You know, he, I just get the quick, well, you know. Yeah. We dated for a while. Yeah. She begged. Yeah, I'm sure. I told her no seven times. She just wouldn't <laughs> stop calling. I made her wait seven years for a ring. Yeah. I mean, you please know the story. Me, <laughs> that's beautiful. Oh, that's so wonderful. All right. Well, what do you think? What, what, where, where are we going to be in five years? Five years. And what, and, what hope, we've been on. We've been doing this. I hope time. you're. I hope in five years, yeah. we are still doing exactly what we're doing, but just never satisfied with where we were the year before or the month before. Like okay. I, I think five years from now would be 19 years for you. Jeez. And so then there's no way that would be the last year. Might We'd have to get 20, to 20 yeah. Yeah. and then at 20 might as well get to 25 and then 25 from now would only be 11 years. You'd only be 56. Yeah. I mean, our, our heroes did it until they were, Mm-hmm. Late sixties, early seventies. Hell, Norm's still going at damn near. Like, uh, I don't mean talking about you me could, and Norm in the same. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you tell me where you're at in five years, and yeah. you you ask me where I'm at in five years, mm-hmm. and you tell me you're doing the show for another five years, and it makes the answer quick. It makes it easy. Mm. So I think it's a better question for you. I than think it is that for I'll me. still be doing this. Well then. And there was a time where I didn't, I wouldn't, I didn't, I didn't want that scenario. It was, it was in the middle of the morning show run where I was so tired all the time, felt like I was getting fat. I really was. And my health was deteriorating. I had little kids at home, a stressed out wife working 65 hour work weeks. And I, there was just no way that I was going to keep doing this show under those circumstances. And get, what, what did this company do? Let me move to afternoons. <laughs> So I think that I'll still be doing this show in five years. I do think I'll have other jobs, though, that will go along with this job. That's another thing. The companies told me, do what you want, dude. You want to start a YouTube show? Go for it. You want to sell a YouTube show to a television network? Go for it. You want to go be a news anchor? Go for it. And that's Just where t- I th- do your radio show now. Okay. No, that's where do I that. say it's a matter of what we continue to build off of. Well, and not getting satisfied with just the status of where we've been. I'm not going to allow you to have the current role you have on our show for five more years. Eh, we'll I'm not there. going, I'm going to kick you off. I'm going to fire you because you either need to be the co-host of the show here. I, I would like to move to a scenario where oh, I'm busy and I got this other gig and I, I got to go with LG to Spain to shoot a TV show. That's okay. Cause you're the co-host of the show and that's cool. Cause you can help, you can pull some slack. Or you have a show somewhere else on your own. You're not, you're not bored up in my fucking show in five years. I'm not going to allow you to do that. I, I, can, I can make you make that. And I won't be bored up in your show at 40 years old. Okay. So I, we can settle you. on okay, that. Okay, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I don't really want you bored up in a year. But let's just let's go month to month here and see how it I'll goes. I'll be bored managing your show at 40 you years old. And the old. listeners don't want to hear that shit. They don't want to hear that but there may be an end. Because we have, we've had a good run, and they it's like been it. Fun, but we still have to do what's best for us and family, right? It can be hard, right? And that's I mean, you, 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 yeah, you still got to do what you got to do, right? So we're not getting any younger. I don't want to leave the. I'm not going to leave the radio show. This is I like doing it again. I didn't like for two years. I didn't like doing it. It wasn't. It wasn't. From six to nine, when the light went on and I was doing the show, it was wonderful. It was all the before and the after that made me not want to do the show because I was tired all the time and getting fat and out of shape, and I was eating like shit. And my kids were little, and my wife was stressed out, and I was tired. I was really tired, and it wasn't iHeart's fault. It was just how it went. It was not no, personal. Yeah. I was ready to go and do something different. 
Um, and they let me go to afternoons and it's rekindled my, my career. It's rejuvenated my energy. I've lost 20 fucking pounds since they moved to the afternoon and I love it again. I like doing it. And one of the, and one of the, but one of the big reasons is not just because they moved in the afternoons is because they moved you to the show and they made you a part of the show. And here's where it eats itself because we're doing, our show's really good now. <laughs> this is the best we've sounded, but it can't be at the detriment of, of our happiness and long-term what we sure. got to do goal-wise, sure. which is why I'm not going to, you, you can't be in here doing this role in a year. You've got three, I've given you, I'm giving you one year to do something. One different. year to get something done. One okay. year. No, right. I, I, there's no time. I don't know, but I, I know in five years, I'm going to fire you before that. If yeah, you we won't no, do. To five okay, years. good. All right. Yeah, yeah. I want you to be doing your own gig. She won't let me get to five years. And I, she'll she leave me in five years. Sure. Yeah, you can't have that. Three. Tops. You can't have that. So at some point, your thing's going to have to take off some. And I think it will. I do. Eh, I, I do. We're think working. So. We're yeah, working. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I think I guess we pull back the curtain some, but that's what our, that's what we should do. That's what here, our though, listeners yeah. need us to do. You know, we want to keep doing this thing. If they would make you the co-host, and I'm probably speaking out of turn here. LG can cut all this. No, Just send it straight to me no, so no, I have it. No, no, for bullshit. Perpetuity. No, no. If they Matt. would. Thank you. If they just make you the co-host of the show, would you be interested in doing a longer show? Absolutely. Yeah. Right? We could kill four again, or five hours. Yeah, you know, this is not, we're not going to just get everything we want, right? We you already give and, you do gotta give and take. 30 long segments, 30 minute long segments. Like. An hour and a half long YouTube <laughs> shows, apparently. <laughs> so we like to hear ourselves bitch. So if they would elongate the show, I don't know if I got the right word. I, I give our show more girth and thickness. I like to use the word, I like if elongated it, versions they, of manertainment. If they make our show favorite. more thick and long. Correct. <laughs> Correct. If, we, if they let our show pack more meat. <laughs> 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 then I, I think that would be great, and I, and I don't want another dime. I don't want a dime. So you definitely or, are gonna want to cut that. Or yeah, <laughs> yeah, that. actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. No, no. Or, or you got to get out of here and go, 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 be on another radio show. Yeah, one way or another. Yeah, and make and put your name on a marker. You deserve to have your name on a on a on a on a show. This is the 14 year anniversary of Mike Taylor in San Antonio. I know, right? Yeah, I, I, it's funny because hearing you, you say get a name on a mark, like I can't imagine hearing that intro like the first time and hearing like Mike Taylor. It was weird. I bet. Yeah, yeah. It was. I bet it was fucking like. I bet it was about twenty different emotions all jammed into about half a second of reaction time, like before. Well, like, all of it, just a rush, all at Why once. You switched, I like how you just switched the clear subject. Mind. You like that? That's <laughs> producer Sam right there. Board manager Sam. That's wow. the, like, having, going well, live. That it's the reason time. we use the same intro all these years. And I'm a believer. Is in it sh- the same exact intro? Yeah. No edits ever? No. I believe in, and I believe in change. Shit. I believe in updating stuff. The, and the, staying the only fresh. thing that's changed is the studio sponsor. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Wow. And those, those are going to change over the years anyway. Pat Evans, who's now retired, was the longtime voice of our of our station. And I can't even, I wouldn't even try to do Pat's voice. No, it's too good. He still does, he still does sideline, right? For UTSA yeah, football. Yeah, that's Pat. Okay. Yeah, Pat Evans. Holy shit. That's Big Balls Pat. You work with him every Saturday. I hadn't, I mean, I guess I knew, but I didn't put two and two together. He created the intro to this show that's 14 years old. It was his idea to roll with cult of personality. I, I don't know. Really? He, I don't know if he heard my demo or he got word that there was this cocky asshole coming in here who was going to pull his shirt off and go balls to the wall. <laughs> Draw on his chest a for little, the sales stuff. A little stuff. Donald Trump wannabe. I don't know what he heard, but he decided cult of personality was going to be our theme show. Wow. And I never met the guy. And so I was skeptical. Okay, fine. Let me hear what he did. This dude. Oh, that's fucking great. I like that. Was so it the it, first thing they sent you to hear, to yeah, listen to? Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. I'd, I'd already gotten the job, and then they, then they went down and told Pat. He was one of the first guys to know that I'd gotten the job. I guess there was, I think there was an article in the paper that day about the gig, and so there, Pat had some pressure. Hey, this new guy's starting up in a week, and we need an intro, and that's what you got. See, these are the stories. Like, when I ask about that first month, I know that might sound like more... Like, 
too behind the scenes for a listener to care. But like to hear, no, they like the, it. Yeah, that's all. Like I fucking love hearing that story. I, I never realized as someone that didn't hear you day one, mm-hmm. but heard it, you know, in by 2011, mm-hmm. and still hear it now. I mean, I think okay, that's 10 years, but surely the first year it didn't imaging sound like like to to nail it like that everything has changed but the intro that's crazy like all of our beds are the traffic music is totally different all of our traffic used to be done in house our traffic bed did you ever hear the move bitch get out the way that was, still that was our traffic 2011 limit. still had that because i, I, I came here that. from mickey mouse i came here from espn and to have ludicrous doing our traffic song i was poor jane brain Jane you, Bray. Yeah, poor Jane Bray. Every time that would come on, you'd be like, move, bitch. <laughs> and here's Jane Bray. <laughs> yeah. I guess I yeah, used to give our traffic people way. shit. <laughs> yeah. We had a traffic gal, Jane Bray. She was so great. And I used to, and I, I, I threw to traffic in those days. You threw. Here's traffic. <laughs> we had, the traffic was in in house at that yeah, at that time Jane. before right, they moved right, it to right. Dallas it was right. Jane and then when Jane was off it was a guy called Austin York and I liked Jane and so when Jane was not doing traffic I would oh, get mad poor Austin who's this dickweed poor Austin There's another, I issued dickweed a second time and so I would try to throw him off and I would say here's a guy who's got a third nipple it's Austin York with traffic here's a dude who had a parasitic twin removed from his ass cheek last week. Here's Austin York. Here's a dude who has had two sex changes. He went <laughs> back bastard. in reverse because Jesus didn't forgive him, and he's going to do traffic now. <laughs> poor, poor he, soul. He wound up quitting. No way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> who could have predicted that? <laughs> I give a lot. I'm sure he's a, never written a manifesto I either. Just, you know, dude, I'm an old Gen Xer redneck idiot, and I come from a school of screw with people, bust balls, and if they stay, then there's they got something, right? That yeah, checks out. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, golly, yeah, that was. I forgot all about Jane Bray. I don't even know if she's alive or dead. I yeah, who knows? Jane, golly, yeah. we killed one board up. Frosty, he died on the job. Lives on. R.I.P. Through the Thursday bit. He, he created the Thursday yep. bit. Uh, yeah. Mexican radio. You could technically, I guess, credit him for creating the fart drop salute, too. He did, yeah. Because, I mean, bringing the fart drops and then... Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Continually, and years later. Mm-hmm. There were days where, in those early days, where Peter, our program director, he would, he would pace in the hall. So worried. Waiting for us to go to commercial so he could come in there and tell me what I did, what we needed to be doing. And I finally had to have it out with him. And we gained mutual respect after that. I was like, Peter, you cannot come in there and quarterback me during the show. It's going to mess up the rest of the show. You've got to wait for – I just – I can't I, – I don't operate that way. I'm Get not going to be able to – I'm not going to be able to deal with you coaching during the game. I just – I can't. When the show's over, bring me into the office, chew me out, tell me what you want me to yeah. do different, and I'll do it different the next but give day. Give me those three hours for I, it creativity. Threw, it threw me off. Just threw me off, man. So, what else you want to know about early days? Uh, I lived in the medical center in a shitty apartment. I was scared to death. I didn't want to spend any money. I rented a terrible apartment. My neighbors were meth dealers. They were meth manufacturers. <laughs> it's a whole different level. They didn't even live in the apartment. They rented the apartment so they could make meth in the bathtub of that apartment next to ours over in the medical center, right off Data Point, right by Data Point Tacos. The great. I got the cheapest apartment I could find. It was a decent distance to the old station. Thinking, I took a six-month lease. I protected myself. Because I, I didn't think I'd make six months either. Wait, so you had a you had a you signed a year long contract, mm-hmm. but we're still <laughs> like, uh, look, I better six just month lease. I better just get a six month lease. <laughs> because I didn't think I'd I didn't think I'd be employed for six months. I think I'd I'd have to be living with Big Mike for three more weeks. I'd, I'd be, have to be going back to Fort Worth to find another job doing something else. It was that tight ropey. And I just I don't know how I just did it. I had little kids, I had a wife. I threw away a teaching. I delayed a teaching career to take that job, and I just, I had you had to come in. I just had to come in here and just it had to go balls out and be successful or fail. No in between. It was never going to be in the middle. It was tough. There was there were a lot of websites in town that ripped me those first couple three four five months on the air. Some Spurs chat sites 
There were uh, Chris Duell ripped me all the time on his other stations. Oh yeah, okay. they they were relentless with me, relentless. They crushed me every day, and Peter would not let me go back on them. He's like, "You're killing them on the ratings. Yeah, it's not. There's worth no it. reason to give them the run. Screw them." Because that's what they're looking for. They're fishing. Yeah, but I, I still wanted to. And I, I still called them Ass Town on the air. And Peter didn't like it. Um, then they came, about two weeks after we started, they, the company wanted us all to start our own uh, web pages. That was another thing that got us on the map. Oh, the era. Yeah, the era of the web. <laughs> like I hear you and Dingus talk about. There was no the, me the miracle. <laughs> the miracle that was Ticket 760, go to the Mike Taylor show page. And when you went to it in those days, it was B porn. It was a B level. It was pornography, <laughs> mostly. It was, I mean, it was. We would get yes! who who yes! who yes! ran it? Oh, Jim Bob. Oh. Okay, oh. Jim okay. Bob Brazil. Oh God. With his Texas State oh. back hat on backwards and his flip flops and his cargo shorts, who now runs five television stations, which is funny. He did the website, and we had consultants that would come in. We had consultants come in that second year I was on the year because they wanted to pick it up that second year. They wanted to know how does your little AM show, the web page, it had a million uniques <laughs> in the last six months. Oh, that's easy to explain. <laughs> it's porn. And they brought me in. <laughs> Never should have brought me in to talk to the consultants. They should have they should have said, Well, we we have strategies and you guys know the you guys know the lingo. We, here's our, we have strategies, and we had a think tank meeting, and we did this, and we did that. We pulled this lever. We, we put naked bitches on the website. <laughs> they, brought, they brought me in, and they said, how are you guys doing this? We put naked bitches on the website. Any more questions? Or are we done here? I knew, this is, and I knew going back to my days at ESPN, consultants don't know shit. No. Or they wouldn't be consultants. That's why they're consultants. They come in, and, and companies pay ridiculous amounts of money to get duped by these people. I know that they don't know how to do good radio because every time I would tell them why I'm successful, they were shocked. Like, oh, wow, I can't, believe, so, I can't believe that works. I can't believe you're playing intro music to segments that has, that has vocals. Well, I'm not going to stop doing it, so fuck off. I can't believe you're not just lining up the phone lines. We go against a lot of the radio grain, and it's because of the city I grew up in, because there are radio stations that do it the way we do it that went against the grain, too that had balls. They didn't have this generic cookie cutter, everybody does it like Jim Rome. Screw that. We were not going to yep. do Jim Rome radio. Jim Rome was Jim Rome, but I'm not going to do Jim Rome radio. That's not who we are. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do intros with vocals. We're going to do 48-minute segments followed by a <laughs> six-minute segment. We're going to violate the shit out of all the codes. <laughs> we're going to put naked women on our website. I'm going to rip all the local media. I'm going to be harsh to the Spurs when they deserved it. Although in those days there was nothing. There wasn't over. hardly. Yeah. I was going to come in here with hot sports opinions, and if I if I had something that I was not hot on, I didn't put it on the air. You know. And I, also, you weren't going to talk 100% sports. God no. God no. And I. That's another thing we battled in those early days. I can't imagine. And that was, hey, dude, you didn't do any Spurs <laughs> talk today. You went. You had a three-hour show and no you didn't Spurs. The Spurs, uh, buddy. Like uh, you're in San Antonio. You know do, what we do here? What are you not? What are you doing? Not talking about the Spurs? Well, they don't play today, Pete. Uh, they damn sure uh, didn't play they, last night. But they practiced, Mike. They practiced. Okay, sure. <laughs> I, when they make news, we'll put them on the air. And I think, I, I, dare I say, that a lot of listeners in this town had never heard radio done that way either. And all I was doing was I was copying bands that I grew up listening to and trying, and I, I had my own style, but you could hear the influences in my favorite bands on the air. I just did what I, I did what I grew up listening to, right? And, and put my own, my own stuff to it. And listeners in San Antonio, I think that's one of the reasons it resonated, and not, not just because I'm a dynamic personality <laughs> or half Mexican. It's that they had not, that kind of radio had not been done in this city before. And I happened to be the lucky motherfucker that got to be the first guy to do it. And that happened. That, it's, it's, it's a lot of things, which is why, even though I'm narcissistic and arrogant, I never forget that, dude, this is, there's five, there's 50,000 people that have had a hand in us being successful. So, at minimum, should we talk for four more hours, LG? God or should damn, we say how far are we uh, We've got, it's, we've got, it's a little over an hour, hour, 10 minutes. Good oh, lord. That's, that's, okay. that's it. That's an ender. Yeah, that's solid. I need that's a cigarette. Good. Yeah, that's done. Yeah, you ain't smoked right. in 60 minutes. I'm, I'm starting got, to shake. My kids in the room here. 
Uh, we're going to hang up and shoot some porn, I think, here in a second. No, Are you down? Yeah. No, I'm not down. Yeah. I'm not ready for that yet. I'll get out my macro lens. Would you shave <laughs> your, If you'll shave your goatee, I might be in. Really? I do like your I'll hair. I'll shave it. Yeah, okay. We kind of, no joke, y'all, we kind of did look like we were on the set of like a C-list porn earlier where it was like a <laughs> country western <laughs> themed porno. Yeah, where yeah. you have sex with the animals. It was uh, that bad. It was, it was bad. It was that bad, yeah. All right, that's well. That's the ender. That's the ender. Love y'all hard. So in five years when we're not allowed to cuss and we're all corporate up because we're making money. <laughs> this will be the historical first one. Love y'all, man. Thank you. We'll do another one of these soon, and I'll release it and tell all the people about it. It's show one of our YouTube show? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, we'll do another one soon. Love you. Peace out. Love you hard. Love you